Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're doing a solo overnight in my Snug Pack Ionosphere. We're making char material, and the episode's packed full of skills. So stick around, we have an outstanding show coming up. That time again, time for another solo overnight in the woods. Check this out. I'm out here in this location. Last week we came out here and we shot azimuths and bearings, learned how to use a compass, and we nav to a secret spot where we did stealth camping. Now, if you haven't seen that video, click on the icon at the top of the screen or simply YouTube search Corporal's Corner Stealth Camping. Check out that video, it's outstanding. Now, how's that relevant? I'm going to the same spot today. I fell in love with that area. These woods are just phenomenal, it's a beautiful place and it's loaded with resources. Let's get out here, walk around, look for resources for our next fire, look for resources and materials for fire making, and maybe some primitive trapping. We'll do all this first, and then set up our camp last. Let's get to it. Major score right here. This is perfect for bird's nests and tinder bundles. Now check this out. Tip and trick number one, how to identify fire making materials in the woods. I'm standing next to an aspen and it's dead. It's been dead for a while. And I know it's an aspen because of the bark pattern. Now it's similar to tulip poplar. However, the inner bark fibers are a lot different. On these ones, there's a white powder or a sheen or like a coating on the inner bark fibers. And it makes it kind of coarse and brittle. Once you see that, it's guaranteed to be an aspen. Okay, so like I already mentioned, this place is loaded with resources. I took a couple steps, I looked down, and I saw something called punk wood or punky wood. Now, that got me thinking. Something that most YouTubers are guilty of, including myself, is that we never talk about our next fire. We just assume that we're out there surviving by day three, we're rescued, we're riding off in the sunset, and we're at home just in time for beer and pizza. But, that could be farthest from the truth, okay? So day three could blur into day four, day five, day 30. Are you still using that Bic lighter? Are you still using that ferro rod? Did you lose your ferro rod? Have you taken the necessary steps to keep that fire going for 30, 40 days? So in order to alleviate that stress or that anguish, we can make something called char material or even char cloth. In this case, it's gonna be char material. So tip and trick number two, how to identify punk wood.
Let's go ahead and pause for a minute. For those inquiring about gear, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon influencer page, and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters influencer page. Both links are inside my description box. All right, check it out. Today's theme is gonna be Snug Pack. Today I got the Snug Pack Ionosphere, and I've been looking for a small backpacking tent. So I thought maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way. Let's look for a backpacking bivy. So this right here is under three pounds, which is perfect for me for a backpacking tent or a backpacking bivy. And it will fit one person plus their gear. Hence, the solo overnighter in the woods. Let's get this bad boy up and check it out. Things I do for a solo overnighter in the woods. Why? Because I love you. And once again, 100% proof that I read my comments. All winter, I've been bombarded by people telling me that you're not creating a rock ring around your fire. You're gonna cause a forest fire. Here's my take on that. You've watched me all winter make a long fire. A fire that's three to five feet in length. Two feet behind that, we have a windscreen a series of stacked logs three to four feet in height. What we're doing there is we're blocking the wind. There's a one-sided windscreen and a three-sided windscreen. We're blocking the wind from blowing those large coals around that could move into the woods and cause a fire. It does nothing for the flame column that comes off, waves around because of the wind, goes over towards those trees, or over towards that dry grass. It also does nothing for the little embers that flicker off up into the air, 20 feet up in the air, and blow across into the dry pines out there in the distance. A fire ring is the exact same idea. It will contain the large coals from being blown around. It also does nothing for the flame column that dances or the embers that go up and lick the top of the trees.
All right, time to think of our next fire. We collected punk wood earlier. We're now gonna take that punk wood and stick it into a container and create char material. It's similar to char cloth, except for we're not gonna take our cotton t-shirts and cut them up and deplete our resources. Now, how are we gonna do this? Well, I've been repeatedly asked to show you solar magnification, and so we're gonna create our ember using that. Now, how do we do that? We actually have a break in the clouds, sun's out, but I'm reminded of a story. Hmm. There was this kid I grew up with by the name of Prometheus. He was younger than me, sort of looked up to me, you know? We did our first work together. Things were good, we made the most of it. One day, Prometheus wanted to give mankind equal footing with the gods. He climbed Mount Olympus, reached up into the heavens, grabbed the sun rays, harnessed them, pulled them down to the earth, focused them, concentrated them, created an ember. He then passed that ember onto mankind. Fire, our first true piece of technology. All we gotta do right now is let that container cool down. Do not open it until it's cool to the touch. In the meantime, I can use those coals to make some chow. And here's what I'm thinking. Stuffed bacon and cheese biscuits. Let's go ahead and pause one more time. If you like what you see here, please do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button and then ring that notification bell. And then feel free to check out my other skills and overnight videos.
This one's too easy. All you're doing is cooking that biscuit to your liking. As the saying goes, at Corporal's, we're guaranteed to shorten your life, kill you, or your money back. So that took almost nothing, and you can see the size of this ember. Imagine transferring this into a damp tinder bundle. It's gonna dry it out, and give you a better chance of getting that fire going. The next fire. I can carry the rest of that material with me, keep it inside of a Ziploc bag or a metal tin, and it's there when I need it. This is outstanding. Truth be told, I ate one walking from over there to here because I just couldn't resist. Stuffed bacon and cheese biscuits. Light and fluffy, buttery taste. Oh man, perfect amount of bacon and cheese. It didn't burst out the side. Um, what can I say, perfection. Oh, imagine this if you will. syrup for dipping sauce. Mm. If I only had about 15 more of these, try to what? Mm. Catch you in a minute. Bruh, stuffed bacon and cheese biscuits. Who could ask for anything more? And like I said, I wish I had bought 50 more of those babies. Now, I promise this video was packed full of skills. So, tip and trick number four, how to make the simplest deadfall trap you'll ever make. So our deadfall trap consists of three parts. A breakaway post, a bait string, and a T-handle. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna saw cut about halfway in, flip it over, do it again. And from here, all we're gonna do is apply pressure. Next step, round the bottoms off. And pick one of these and carve it to a point. Last but not least, all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take some bank line and tie a jam knot or arbor knot around that point. Go about 18 inches out and then tie it to a T-handle. Now for all my military vets out there, simply find a rock or something. Place the T-handle down. Put your rock or something against that T-handle. I always put down a rock here from my post. 
put the post together and then lean your deadfall against that post keeping that bait string nice and tight and if you want to learn more about deadfall traps simple YouTube search corporal's corner deadfall traps anything touches that bait string done deal That's what I'm talking about. This is how life should be every single day of the week and twice on Sunday. First order of business, my channel of the week or channels of the week. The first one I wanna talk about, I talked about him a couple weeks ago. His name's Paul Hack of Adaptable Survival. And I'm gonna bring him up again because he has a new video out. And that new video is the basic class at the Pathfinder School. He tagged along as a helper because he's currently in the instructor program and he's to get OJT hours. So he comes in as a helper, helps out, photographs, videotapes, everything. So the new video actually shows students from beginning to end. So we're not going to give everything away, but those portions that are there, those segments, in my opinion, give a good estimate of what to expect. Also shows teaching from various instructors. You might want to check it out. Again, that's Paul Hack of Adaptable Survival. Now the next one I want to talk about really quick, I brought him up a couple weeks ago as well. That's Andrew Heath of Drew's Adventures. Now there's still some kind of miscommunication of which channel's his. So go ahead and look at the icon at the top of the screen. Look at that picture. And that's his symbol, that's his logo. Look for that and it'll take you right to his videos. He has skills videos and overnighters. He's also an instructor at the Pathfinder School. So check him out. He's something new that's hitting the scene and he has potential. Stuff to bacon and cheese biscuits, baby. Tell you what. So real quick while we're sitting here, you see that smoke over there. I'm always asked, well, what do I do about mosquitoes? Well, you can spray permethrin all over your clothes. Some people are triggered by that, say, well, it's poison. Well, an old school thing is the smoke. Campfire smoke is actually a deterrent for mosquitoes. So you can stand in front of that, get in front of it, immerse your clothes in that, let it smoke and smolder for a little bit, and believe it or not, it keeps the bugs away, or keeps them at bay. So, there you go. Last thing I want to say real quick is a thank you to all my subs, all my old subs for sticking around, all my new subs. Hold on, cause, and buckle up, because you're in for a hell of a ride. New things on the horizon. Tell you what, it's finally cooled down and this is so relaxing. Tell you what, wow. <sighs> Living, L I V I N.
All right, so me caught that. You saw that I switched back over to my Primus stove. Now I've had this Primus stove for about seven or eight years. And here's why I switched back. If you look at the Coleman compared to the Primus, they're both the same height. However, the burner's bigger. And I noticed that trying to boil water, it actually boils a lot faster. There's also four points of contact on here. And putting skillets on here or nesting cups on the Coleman, they kind of wobble like this. This one's a lot more stable. always outstanding and for those that keep inquiring about the mug no this is not corpus corner merchandise now it could be in the future this is actually a gift from the bushcraft diva um, I actually pimped her channel about a month ago and her subscribers jumped and people were checking her out if you haven't seen her go look her up on YouTube bushcraft diva go ahead and talk about the snug pack ionosphere time will tell um, am I happy with it right now yes it didn't rain last night so I don't know um, but right now we're looking at 30 inches wide 104 inches in length it's got a waterproof bathtub on it with tape seams overall it's a mesh bivy with a waterproof rain fly and it weighs about three pounds so does it fit my criteria yes will I use it again hell yes And the Snug Pack Blankie, in my opinion, is basically a glorified poncho liner. Compared to the Helicon, Helicon's got a lot more uses, turns into a lightweight sleeping bag, poncho, hammock underquilt, and a blanket. So you try and compare the two, Helicon first time every time, but nothing wrong with Snug Pack. Welcome back. Last night's solo overnighter was outstanding, and as promised, it was packed full of bushcraft skills. Hopefully, you can't complain about that. As always, all the gear in my videos can be found on my Amazon Influencer page or my Self-Reliance Outfitters Influencer page. Both links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.